What's going on everybody, C4 here, and welcome to today's video where I'm finally hopping on the bandwagon, getting my tier list out, and I'm gonna strive for these tier lists, because it's, you know, it's the down period between Madden and the new Madden and the draft and the offseason, there's just not a whole lot going, and outside of the Marshalls, I'm starting to run thin of what we can talk about, but the tiers list is becoming something that's uber popular right now, a bunch of other YouTubers have done it, I've got tagged in videos from like your boy Pizza and Bengal. And I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to start doing these because last year we did this on Twitter. It was like some of my most interactive tweets. I love the debate. It's exactly what this point in the offseason needs. So we're going to start with the QB tiers. Now, I wasn't so sure if I'm just going to do straight positional tiers. Originally for today's video, I was going to rank the hottest girlfriends in the league. Shout out to like the old content we did like seven years ago on my channel. If you want to see something like that, maybe tomorrow... Let me know, but there's like a bunch of different ideas that we could use for tiers, not just positional rankings, but I figure quarterback's the most important position. It's the most polarizing debate when it comes to football fans, so why not do it myself? This is literally my sixth time recording this. Five times it went too long, and then when I finally found one that I was good, I was these aren't my list. The guy didn't have Tom Brady, and I was like, oh, okay, probably can't put up a video talking about QB rankings without Tom Brady. So let's see. We start here. I like to, I just want to get parameters. Let's find one S tier so you know what we're working with and one F tier. And this is what I did in my last video and I think it should remain the exact same for today. So for F tier, we're going to put Jameis Winston. That's a good starting point. He is not a good quarterback. He struggled with the exact same things he struggled with at Florida State. Now, yes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did bring in Bruce Arians. Maybe that can turn around. But until proven otherwise... F tier is Jameis Winston, like one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the league. You could also just while we're here, throw in Ryan Tannehill as F tier. Uh, you know, we, we don't need much debate where it comes to these. You could probably throw in, we got Case Keenum, F tier. Daniel Jones for sure, before we can jump into the rookie quarterbacks, F tier. And, you know, that will be the good starting point. Now, because... He wasn't in the last video that I actually had ready to go up. We'll put Tom Brady here in the S tier, and I'll, I'll just start with Mahomes too. We'll put the Madden 20 cover away. For Brady, while his stats may not be the pinnacle, the creme de la creme in the NFL, he still wins the Super Bowl. There's still no more dangerous quarterback in games that matter the most, so we still have to have Tom Brady there. And then you obviously put in Patrick Mahomes, 50 touchdowns. MVP was incredible last season. And while I do think there might be a little bit of a sophomore slump, uh, you know, no more Kareem Hunt to keep the RPOs honest. I saw first game with the Philadelphia Eagles when you have a really good RPO and then go into the next season when you don't have much of a run game. It is very frustrating to watch your offense go. You're going to assume something bad's most likely and deservedly going to happen to Tyreek Hill. So it could very well be a you know night and day difference offense that Patty Mahomes is going to be trying to operate within there for Kansas City. But based upon last year, as we enter the upcoming season, Mr. Mahomes, along with Tom Brady, are the S tier. So now we have the parameters of the bottom tier and the top tier. Let's go into these little photos they have for us here on the list. So first up, we got Alex Smith. I'm going to put Alex Smith C tier, low C tier. Now, when I go through these tiers, I'm going to have high and low for guys because I, I feel like it is kind of generic. There's, there's a good difference between like a guy that's cusp D. Like we're thinking letter grades, right? Like Alex Smith would be a strong C, I feel like. Not a C plus, not a C minus, but a strong C. We saw what he did two years ago with the Kansas City Chiefs. He was in the MVP race. He moved the ball efficiently. Maybe enough so that you could kind of question how QB friendly is that Andy Reid offense for a quarterback. We know it's very QB friendly, but how QB friendly for that 50 touchdowns. But we're not going to overly criticize the success Patty Mahomes had last year. We look at Alex Smith. He's a journeyman. He is like, a, you know, he's a C. C should be you're like, they're, they're starters. They're average. All these guys hypothetically are around the starting conversation. But I feel like, see, like, yeah, they're a guy that they can play solid enough that if the rest of the team, if you have a good run game, if you have a good defense, they could probably take you into the playoffs. Um, so I feel like that's a good starting point for Alex Smith. We got Josh Allen here. I'm going to put Josh Allen D tier, a little bit high of, of F, just because he had some wow moments. There was a point in time last year for the Buffalo Bills where he was the best player on the offensive side of the ball. The same could be said for a couple guys. Same could not be said for a couple other the rookies last season, which you'll see when we get to these rankings. I think Josh Allen uh, has a lot of upside. Obviously, there's the accuracy issues, but you have the cannon iron. You have the traits that can't be taught. You have now he's excellent scrambling ability. I think that for him to move up tiers, which I, I hope we can see, 
And if he does move up these tiers and does what he thinks I need him to do, you could see an AFC wild card contender Buffalo Bills. Right now, there's a bunch of guys in the Buffalo Bills that are like have been role players. Cole Beasley, you got John Brown for the deep threat. Zay Jones needs to reach his potential. You got Dawson Knox at tight end, one of the more polarizing tight end prospects from this year. If a guy like Josh Allen can tap into those guys, make those guys around him better, that is the most, I think, important, tangible... Is that tangible? Would that be untangible? Whatever trait that a quarterback needs is a franchise quarterback. A true franchise quarterback makes everyone else around him better. Not all these quarterbacks do. I feel like a guy like Josh Allen, if he can take that step next season with the Buffalo Bills and and reach that potential with Dawson Knox, reach that potential with Zay Jones, utilize Cole Beasley, utilize the strengths of John Brown, I think you're definitely seeing a guy in Josh Allen that could get bumped up into that C, maybe, if we're ever putting real lofty expectations, that B tier. Uh, We got Baker Mayfield. I'm buying into the hype just a little bit. I'm going to put him as a low B tier. I mean, he's he's supposed to succeed this upcoming season. You get the offense last year. You turn the Browns from the laughing stock to, oh, my God, they might make the playoffs. Now you throw in Odell. You throw in Kareem Hunt whenever he's going to be ready. You know, he, he was pretty damn good last season. I feel like low B for Baker Mayfield. And on paper for this upcoming season, he should definitely be a legitimate B. Maybe a little bit overhyped. There's some Baker Mayfield MVP hype talk. I don't necessarily agree with that just yet. But he had a good rookie season, if not great rookie season. I think no, I think we probably could say great rookie season that he should be viewed as a low B grade. Ben Roethlisberger, I'm putting him right there as well. This may be kind of a surprise, maybe the first surprise of the video. But I feel like with Ben Roethlisberger, we're going to find out how he won. He won. Le'Veon Bell's gone. Antonio Brown's gone. It is his team. It's him, Juju. You got James Washington. You got Deontay Thompson from Toledo. But we're going to see how good Ben Roethlisberger actually still is at this point without the talent around him. But the reason why he's at B is he looks really good at home and absolutely below average on the road. Like if you found out Ben Roethlisberger threw four interceptions on the road over these last couple of years, you wouldn't be surprised because he's that bad. And when you're that bad and that inconsistent between home and a road, you're going to go B. You're going to have to go B grade. You're just too inconsistent. You never know on any given week. what you know, literally you do know on any given week what you're going to get with Ben Roethlisberger. If he's home... Put him in your fantasy football lineups. You're going to have a good day if you're a Steeler fan. If you're on the road, you're very worried. You don't know what he's going to bring. We got Drew Brees. I'm going to put Drew Brees still in S tier. Now, this is going to be my list has maybe more S tiers than it, than it potentially should have. But I, here's how I view Drew Brees making the list. I think we have a fair point for Brady, the Super Bowl. You put him in the playoffs, he's unstoppable. Mahomes lit it up last year. Drew Brees, statistically speaking, didn't have, you know, the Drew Brees-esque years. I think a big part of that is the run game now with Kamara and Ingram last season and going forward with Kamara. But it's still, I put this hypothetical scenario in my head. If it's, you're in the NFC Championship, you're in the Super Bowl. Two-minute drill, Drew Brees has the ball, touchdown for the Saints can win it. How scared are you? If you are, you're most likely going to be 9 or 10 out of 10 scared. If you, And that's because it's Drew Brees. And the fact that he still has that reputation, he's still super accurate, S tier for Drew Brees, even though his stats are kind of like Tom Brady and dwindling into probably A tier category, you still have that fear. You still have that extra level that you can hit at any given time. All right, we got Cam Newton. I'm putting him at C tier. And I'm, you know, maybe I get the perception that I don't like Cam Newton. I just feel like MVP Cam Newton, I like it. As a neutral, as someone that doesn't really care about the Panthers, I want him to reach those levels again. Maybe that surgery he had this offseason can bring him back to that form. Because you can remember when Cam Newton won the MVP, his wide receivers weren't that great. It wasn't like he had an all-star cast of wide receivers. So he definitely could reach that form again. And when he did, it was super exciting. Yeah, there's the memes. He didn't dive on the fumble. That definitely, you know, I didn't like him for that. Definitely hurt him in my view, the fact that he had like, you know, he could have won it for his team. He just either way, we're not going to dwell on that. I want to see him get back to MVP form, but the Cam Newton for the last two years is incredibly inconsistent, and you know he's a high tier C because he has that MVP grade. So uh, you know definitely can move up if Cam Newton gets back to his old form. You know he could get to S. He is literally unstoppable, but he is so inconsistent. He's going to have to go C, and hopefully whatever surgery he had can bring him back to that old form. Uh, we got Derek Carr. He's a high D grade, I think, because he's fighting for his job this season. He, you know, if he doesn't play well with Gruden, he's probably going to be looking for a job. I'll put him at D. I mean, his stats weren't bad last year. 19 touchdowns, 10 picks. He was an MVP candidate, what, three years ago? So, I mean, you know, he's a high D. He's a fringe. He'd probably be between 
DNC, but right now, just because it's probably do or die for him as a starter this year, he has to go D. We have Kirk Cousins. I'm going to put him as a solid C. Like, he's, he's in that Alex Smith territory. I'd have Cam Newton a little bit higher, but Kirk Cousins, more so because of his contract. I mean, he can put up good stats. It's just he's paid like a quarterback that can win a Super Bowl. I just don't think he ever will do it. He'll never elevate his team. And uh, I'd be definitely a little bit worried if I'm a Minnesota Viking fan about that huge contract on the books. We got Dak Prescott. He is going to go C, t- C category as well. Uh, he wins games. His stats aren't that bad. He's not that great as a passer, but neither is really Cam Newton, to be completely honest with you. But Dak Prescott can move the ball. I think you could debatably almost say he's clutch. He can find a way to win games with his legs when he needs to. And I think because of that, you got to put him C tier, a solid C tier quarterback. We got Darnold. I'm going to put Darnold in the F. You know, he just he's he's still a developmental prospect. He's right on line with a rookie, hypothetically speaking. Going into this year, yes, he does have that year experience, but I, you're not going to rate Sam Darnold that much higher than any of the rookie starters or any of the fringe starters this year. He's still, last year coming to USC, needed that developmental year. He got it, so I think, obviously, sights would be for him to move up to D, but I think where Josh Allen was the best player on the field at times and would take over games, you didn't see that out of Darnold just yet. So he is a very much high F-tier quarterback based upon a potential alone. Uh, you got Eli Manning because of the Super Bowls and stuff. You still got to put him at D in terms of play style. This, you know, like I said, this this list goes into skill, goes into the intangible and stuff. You, you know, you can't outright disrespect him and put him in F. He can't have an okay game if there's a good game plan called. So he, he's very much a low D. He's between an F and a D. Uh, if we got Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic, he's going F. Nick Foles, pretty much like Eli Manning. You know, you get that playoff form. Even Eli, as much as Eli is a meme, as much as we know he's not that good, if the Giants make the playoffs, you still have this feeling that Eli Manning could win it all again. And I feel like you get the same thing with Nick Foles. Inconsistent play in the regular season, but if they can make the playoffs, you never know. That is a quality within itself, so that we're going to put them there. D, we got Jared Goff. He's going to go C. I mean, statistically, he's definitely trending towards more the B tier, but I still just think he's a robot to McVay. He's not his own quarterback. He is just the most scheme-protected, scheme-fit QB uh, in the league right now. I think he's a good quarterback. He can make a lot of throws, but you saw down the stretch that if what McVay is calling isn't working, it's not like Goff's going to be able to take the game over like some of the elite quarterbacks can and have done. Uh, to win you a game. I just don't buy that right now. So he's a high tier C grade quarterback. We got Matt Ryan. I'm going to put Matt Ryan in the A. He's one of those quarterbacks that statistically, yeah, should be in the A. You could hold it against him. You could say that a lot of quarterbacks, if they're put in the scenario that he is in in Atlanta, that with a fully healthy offense, they have a great O-line, great run game. Julio Jones, you got first round pick in Calvin Ridley. They would all put up pretty big stats. But I mean, you know, he MVP, took his team to the Super Bowl. Uh, I definitely think he is a solid A tier quarterback. We got Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going F for the time being. If we held Kirk Cousins' contract against him a little bit, same has to be said for Jimmy Garoppolo because he is getting paid like a A-tier quarterback. He is yet to throw for 30 touchdowns. He's let, yet to play a whole season yet. Uh, how many games does he actually want? You know, it's just there is so much questions around Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, for potential, I probably would put him like between F and D. But given what we've seen so far, you know, we're holding the same for the rookies. We just don't know yet with Darnold, for example. Like, I've seen more out of Josh Allen than I have from Jimmy Garoppolo. So Jimmy Garoppolo is an F, and I will say that is much more based upon where he's at with his contract and what we've seen on the field than it is his potential. Flacco's an F. You know, he's just a journeyman at this point. Lamar Jackson's an F. As much as I am a Lamar Jackson fan, teams do not respect him yet as a passer. He looked pretty rough as a passer. And while he's electrifying, while he's going to be overpowered and maddened with Hollywood Brown, until proven otherwise, you know, he needs to take that next step. And even, you know, again, Josh Allen did scrambling what we thought Lamar Jackson would have. And while Lamar had some decent game scrambling, still, again, Josh Allen looked like the most dangerous rookie quarterback last season, not named Baker Mayfield. We got Philip Rivers. We'll put Philip Rivers here in the A tier, but for me, he's kind of a hybrid between A and B. If we're talking regular season, he's A, but if we're talking like December football into playoffs, he's a B. I feel like trying to solve why the Chargers are never taken seriously as a playoff contender, I think it needs to come down to the fact that I just don't see Philip Rivers ever winning it in the clutch. He can outduel with quarterbacks. He can go in it. For, you, know, you throw four touchdowns, he can throw four touchdowns. It's just when the big play needs to happen, more often than not, Philip Rivers isn't making that play. But because this is not just based upon playoffs, it's both the whole season, regular and post. You know, he, he's a, he's a low-end A-grade quarterback. We're going to put Andrew Luck in there. 
Absolutely. Now that they're starting to build up that offense for him, he has a tremendous offensive line. Uh, I mean, Andrew Luck is always going to be one of those guys when he is healthy, can give you a full 16 games. Uh, I'm not so, we don't really know how clutch he is, really, but more so in terms of just being a powerhouse, moving the ball up and down the field, he can do it as good as any QB in the league. We got Mariota here, Marcus Mariota. He's going to go D tier. He can win the games for you. He's not going to, it's not always going to look pretty, but, you know, he could find a way to win. He's always going to keep the Titans in it. So we'll keep him as a solid D tier. Same goes with Trubisky. I actually kind of view Trubisky and Mariota roughly the same. Um, I, I feel like Trubisky does have a ceiling that he's kind of getting close to. Maybe he'll be able to you know, go a little bit more beyond that because of Nagy. But for right now, I just see Trubisky being a guy that can scramble a little bit. He's an okay passer, inconsistent, but can do enough to get his team to win enough games. we got a couple of rookies here. Uh, we'll put Drew Locke in F tier just because you know he's a second rounder. Um, I really do feel like all the, all the QB should go here. I'll be a little bit generous just to take a leap of faith that Mur Kyler Murray, as the for sure starter of the group, he is so damn good from college that if he can be Russell Wilson, you know, I really shouldn't put any rookie in D, but we'll just have him as like a hybrid just so I'm not just putting all the rookies in F. I'll put Kyler there in D, even though I still thought Dwayne Haskins might be the safest pick uh, of the QBs this year. Uh, we got Dalton. I'm going to put Dalton here in D tier, kind of like Derek Carr a little bit, where they, they have had a lot of good moments, a lot of times where they could be fringe MVP type quarterback, but ultimately they're fighting for their job this year, and uh, maybe he can turn it around with uh, Taylor there coming over from the Rams to help coach him up, but it is what it is for right now for Dalton. Russell Wilson, S tier. I think when you talk about most valuable player to their team, Russell Wilson last year was more MVP-ish than Mahomes. I think if you took any of these quarterbacks away from their, on their team, what team would be impacted the most? Without a doubt, it would be the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson is super, super good. Aaron Rodgers, A tier. Uh, S tier, actually. He's, he, he's actually, based upon the last couple years, I think he's a fringe by stats. But you know the talents there with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I think he is fringe A tier at this point. But for me, he's still definitely good enough to be S tier. Rosen's going in the F. Just, he didn't have a lot to work with last year in Arizona, so uh, I'm pulling for him in Miami. Definitely want a lot more competition if you're not a Patriot fan and you just like football in general. We got Matt Stafford. I feel like... I feel like I'm going to put Stafford in C. He's a high C grade. Um, you know, he there's a lot of concern that when Calvin Johnson retired, he would be exposed. That wasn't really the case, but it's just like he has that come from behind, that meme. Oh, I see you have a lead there. You know those Matt Stafford memes? But I also think what kind of goes unnoticed is that a decent amount of the time, they're in that deficit because of his play in the first half, because of Matt Stafford. So while he's able to dig himself out of a hole, it's just the overall success, he's a high C. He, you know, I, I don't I don't buy the Detroit Lions ever as a contender. He's getting paid like a quarterback that's taken up so much of a salary cap that he should be able to elevate his team into the playoffs. And, you know, they, you know, they haven't been able to pay the offensive line. They haven't been able to pay to have a run game because his contract's so big. So I'm just going to have Stafford as a high C Deshaun Watson's going to be a C. I think he gets a lot of unjust criticism. They don't realize how bad his offensive line was. Um, I think I am a little bit biased as a Deshaun Watson fan, but I, you know, I think that's ultimately sees a, sees a nice spot for him. He could trend towards B when he's on point. And lastly, Carson Wentz is going in the A tier. You got to remember, he still has that stench, that aroma of being the league's Unofficial MVP two years ago. Philadelphia Eagles don't win the Super Bowl without Carson Wentz. We don't really win it without Nick Foles either. But I think if we get a full 16 out of Wentz, if he could stay healthy, he's going to be like kind of one of these hybrid guys. But we need to see a little bit more proof in the pudding with Carson Wentz. But we do know that when he is healthy, he is he can light it up with the best of quarterbacks. So for me, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, he's eight to nine quarterbacks. If you're ranking your top 10, I think that's pretty fair. And that's coming as a biased Eagle fan. So there you go, guys. Those are my QB rankings tiers. I'm sure you're going to have a field day in the comment section below. If you agree or disagree, let me know. Also, if you guys like some of the other ideas, like rating the watch, hot, talking about their, their bosoms and stuff like that, we could do college rankings. We could do everything in between. Let me know in the comment section below what you want to see. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.